Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Jamie. And this is America's Ass is a Gal Cat. Back to America's Asses of Galcast. We are an MCU podcast by women for everybody. Right, ladies? Absolutely. You got it. So if you're listening to this, I am assuming you just finished listening to the last one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, we have to thank, uh, everybody who listens, uh, you know, as you know, for those who listen regularly, we just refer to everybody who listens to us as the OG six plus, because for the longest time, we've only, we only had six subscribers for months and months and months. A while. Yeah. For a while. while. And now we have eight. So no, we have more than eight, (laughs) but (laughs) but less than that's why we call you the OG6++ plus plus for the right, the OG6++. <laughs> plus plus. <laughs> but we want to thank you guys right off the bat. You guys are just awesome. We are getting some pretty good feedback and some nice constructive criticism. And um, we're taking it to heart. Just want to say thank you guys very, very, very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. You're so- welcome. <laughs> oh, Moana. <laughs> Uh, sorry my niece was in no, the musical two weeks ago oh. and then I saw her last weekend and she was singing for us again oh. she was performing and uh brother number one was telling her that her his favorite part was with Maui and how Maui says you're welcome who did she so, play she was one of the like ancestors Nice. And then she was like in the ensemble. So she was, you know, when they were uh, in the beginning and did like the history and stuff. That's awesome. Cute. That is yeah. so cute. Oh, God, yeah. I love- my, my little rock star who's uh, seven going on 37. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 27. Let's say that. <laughs> I love hearing about people's children in their plays. I love going to see them in their Dance Such recitals. a recital. It was awesome. And if my kids would fucking do it, they won't. They were in. Did I ever tell you about the Joffrey Ballet with my kids? No. No. So the Joffrey Ballet here in the city of Chicago, they have a special program for special children. On Sundays, they can take ballet lessons. And so they were accepted into this program. Like there's a waiting list. My kids hated it, Aww. hated it, nothing but screaming. And we're walking downtown, <laughs> going to the Joffrey Ballet, and they're throwing Aww. themselves in the middle of the street in downtown Chicago. Oh we tried for three weeks, and then finally the teacher was like, because you know me, I'm determined. I'm like, nope, they've got to get used to it by now. It's been three weeks. I'm like, they're going to eventually get used to it. And then the teacher pulls me aside. She's like, you know, we're prepared, <laughs> we're prepared to give you a full refund on both children. And <laughs> we won't hold it against you. Um, and you can always, you know, we can always sign them up again when they're ready. They fucking got kicked out of a special <laughs> program <laughs> for special children. Oh, my God, my kids, they just, they, they, but this was in their defense. They were like four at the time. So they're seven right. now. It might so. be different now. They like to play around the house and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. I, it, it might you know, be different. They love to dress and up. And, uh, well, Princess yeah. just wrote her first song tonight. See? Do you there want you me to Wait, it's called, <laughs> it's so mature for a seven-year-old. She goes, she... <laughs> It's called, I want to wrap you up in my love. (laughs) Oh, I love it. That is adorable. Good for her. That's awesome. She goes, she goes, she goes, because mommy always, you know, mommy, will you cuddle? Will you give me cuddles? Because every night, you know, every night we go to bed, we cuddle and we talk and we 
sing together every night. And, you know, so she is laying on the couch and she's like, mommy, will you wrap me up in your love? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, yes, I will. I'm like, yes, I will. Come here. Let me wrap you up in my love. And then um, she and then she just started singing it. When it snows, I wrap you up in my love. When it rains, I wrap you Aww. up in my love. And she goes Aww. through every, it was so cute, girls. Oh my God. I love it. At seven, I was probably eating fucking paste. <laughs> She's writing songs. Well, at seven, you could also tie your shoes and wipe your own ass too. So we all have our setbacks. <laughs> so <laughs> don't get too excited there. I was watching uh, Titanic in the movie theater. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Waiting for my probably, favorite song. Maybe I wasn't eating paste, but I definitely was probably putting it on my hand and feeling it off like a second skin. Oh, absolutely. I did that until like junior high. I still right. do that. It's called paraffin wax now. <laughs> <laughs> we still do it. Jesus. Ah, oh, all right. So what else, ladies? What else? So your your niece had, what about Nugget? How's Nugget doing? He's good. He's loving hot dog. Got him a five foot hot dog, which for people who listen, our OG six plus hot dog <gasps> is Mickey Mouse. Oh um, my god. Yeah, friends of ours were getting rid of it. <gasps> um and like this thing is like brand fucking new, but it's legit 5 feet tall. That's awesome. Oh my and god. And so he like lost his shit yesterday. Oh. <gasps> it was the cutest thing ever. You need to send, send you the video. Send me the video. Oh my god. That's awesome. Yeah. I got I got I so. bought I bought the princess that um huge body pillow that cat that's a huge body pillow on the tiki talks <laughs> oh i bought that for her and i'm like oh what about little man so i got him a five foot tall alligator body pillow damn so, yeah <laughs> whatever um send me that video of nugget i want to see his cute little face go berserker yeah <laughs> those cheeks i just every time i see a picture of Nugget, I just want to take those cheeks. What is that your is that your phone? Is that your phone? No, I have nothing going. I didn't hear that. I heard that. I thought maybe it was Mr. Big talking. No. <gasps> Do we have another ghost? Maybe. All right. I legit out. heard a man, a man talking. talking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Remember we had baby ghost in one episode. So now we have man ghost. Aye. All right. Well, yeah. we'll figure it out. I'll keep it in if I find it. I'll yeah. try to amplify it too. All right. All right, Jamie. So you're up this week. Oh my God. Look at that face. Oh my God. He is looking more and more like oh, I'm so sorry he is looking he is looking fuck more you. sorry but he, <laughs> I don't care that you use the name I'm just saying fuck you he needs to look like me that boy does not look anything like you he either looks like his dad he looks like little big or he looks like his grandpa he looks like your father <sighs> after everything I went through I know I know. Doesn't even look like me. Little man looks just like me. Looks just like my dad, I should say. Little man looks exactly like my dad. And then mm -hmm. the princess looks just like Mr. Big's family. Like 100%. I keep hearing it. I haven't heard it since. Hold on. I'm, I'm not gonna... doing anything. Whoever is messing with our video, please stop. Please gonna make editing a nightmare <laughs> it's gonna make it a nightmare please stop please thank you All right goomba no maybe it's it goomba. His voice. no it was like a young man voice like really young yeah it wasn't his voice yeah all right all right jamie you're up this week what do we got yeah. what if so i am covering uh what if season one episode two 
which is what if T'Challa became a Star Lord? Ooh. I like. I liked it. I I know I you was, guys. Uh, yeah, it was not my favorite. Like as I'm watching it, I'm going. Oh, I really wanted to like it, but I don't <laughs> because I feel we're not huge Guardians of the Galaxy Black See, Panther I fans. I am. Yeah, I oh, literally okay. have probably watched Guardians one and two dozens of times yeah oh okay because i could see why i love the f- seeing it a million times yeah and i love it mm-hmm. but these two i haven't seen as much obviously no i think it was just i wasn't expecting it to go that way yeah or is it because possibly you're so used to the to um, the storyline of yeah. Guardians, probably. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's exactly yeah. what I think it is. Okay. All right. I'm sure as time goes on, it will grow on you. Yeah. Yeah. But that first watch, I was like, oh. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, whatever. What? <laughs> it's all right. So the episode starts off with the watcher doing the introduction of time, space, reality about a prism of endless possibility of a single choice branches out into single realities. And then, you know, he says, I am the watcher of these vast new realities. So um, the galaxy to your eyes is hundreds of billions of lights. And it starts off with a person on Morag entering the temple. Um, He takes out the magnetic device and he pulls an orb from the force field. Koreth the Punisher and two, oh, I can't say it, Sakarans? Sakarans? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. So someone correct me. So Koreth? Um, You're not talking about Koreth, are you? Well, yeah. Well, I talked about Koreth the Punisher and then the oh, two okay. other guys. But there's- Who are the two other guys? I didn't even know who the two other guys were. They were just like standing there. They didn't say anything. Are you there? Oh, shit. Voice? No! Get the fuck out of here. I heard it and Nikki heard it. Nikki's twice right now. No, I heard it the first time, but it was like for a long time. No. Nikki's still frozen. No, she's not. Oh, no, frozen now she, she's muted. No, no, you're muted, Nikki. I'm back. Oh, oh. yeah. What happened? Yeah, it kicked me out. I know that, but what happened? I don't you know, know what you. We no, lost the whole thing. You, yeah, I you lost pissed it. off. Whatever it was, I think so. And it was like, "Fuck you, yeah. bitch!" I right? Because so. you're like, uh, well, you want to know what? Not? I mean, come on. We we have a we have this thing going on. It's not like uh, this is something brand new. But yeah, it's not like it's something brand new. It's not like, you know, if we have ghosts, fuck you, asshole. No, I'm never going to say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to say that. But like, come on, have I'm a little piss them off. I don't want to piss them off. I'm sorry for pissing you off, ghosts. But listen here, we got shit to do. And it's, yeah, we got a schedule to keep. It's 10 30. <laughs> it's 10 fucking 30 on a Thursday night. Come on. We want to. We got, we got shit to do, things to do. Now, here's the thing, ladies. I do not know if um, it's still recorded. Was it still recording on your end? It was until you got kicked out until and then it said got stop. Out and then it just, Cause it, and then it told me Alyssa was the host. Okay. But it wasn't recording still. Because oh, it has. Because you were frozen for a little bit. And then it kicked you mm. out. Yeah, I wasn't but it was paying still attention if you were frozen because I was reading. But right, okay, all right. So let's just continue from wherever. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck technical difficulties. <laughs> you know what? Also, too, once we do start seeing each other, we will be recording directly onto my computer, so it won't sound like this. It will actually sound normal. It will sound good. Like we're in the same room. 
Because right. we will be. <laughs> All right. So I, the last question I had were, who were the two guys with Koreth? Well, Alyssa told Sakarians. me. Sakarians. Oh, I just made it. You know, I do have a Those tidbit. from Sakar. Sakar. Right, but I was like, Sakarans. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a... Isn't that a chemical and like fake sugar? Saccharin? Saccharin. Saccharin, yeah. <laughs> I do have a tidbit about the opening scene when they're when he's walking to get the orb, you know? Go for it. All right. Because I have no tidbits. All right. So in the opening scene, I just want to do a comparison between T'Challa and Peter. There's a couple differences between T'Challa and Peter. So T'Challa doesn't have main like the first the first difference is that t'challa doesn't have a really awesome soundtrack that he's listening to like peter um and peter puts the gravity trap on the floor where t'challa holds it in his hand and then he later uses it as a weapon and then there's also like koreth's reaction which we'll get to because you haven't talked about that yet but that's a humongous that sets the tone yes. for the whole episode. Oh, show. Um, so the Sakarians point their guns at T'Challa and Korath tells them to show some respect as this is the Star-Lord, legendary outlaw who steals from the powerful and gives to the powerless. And then asks if they should be bowing or kneeling. <laughs> <laughs> and so T'Challa says it's not necessary and Korath states that he needs to take the orb off of his hands because his boss Ronan who is super super intense would be convinced to make a career change oh. so uh, going to I know Nikki was going to say um, Korath um, in this reality is a massive fan of Star-Lord yes. and in the movie he's like who are you like, like who the fuck are, are you yeah right like i'm sorry who are you yeah um, yeah but here he's like a super big massive dork fan yeah and then he fanboys him the entire totally so yes classic star lord <laughs> and then when korath asks if he should bow or kneel T'Challa says neither is necessary, which is similar to what he said to Bruce um, when in Infinity War, when mm-hmm. Bruce is talking to Rhodey and mm-hmm. is like, well, should we bow? Like, you know, and, and Rhodey's like, he's a king. Rhodey's like, yeah, yeah, he's a king. And then he's, you know, Bruce starts bowing and T'Challa's like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> you see, Rhodey's like, fucker, I was messing with you, ass. Right. And he's uh. like, <laughs> <laughs> so T'Challa says that he appreciates the interest, but is all staffed up. Korath says he totally gets it, but now gets to, you know, take it out and, you know, they brawl. And so T'Challa says, well, if that's what you truly want. And Cora <laughs> says it would be his honor of his life, but shouldn't use the gun. <laughs> He's like, what, what? Like, what do I do? <laughs> and so T'Challa says, no, go ahead. But Cora says, no, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> like the friendly like, how do you want me to enter leading up to a fight? Yeah, how do you want me to beat your ass? Do you want me to the you gun? Want me to do this? Or... No, no, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so T'Challa then grabs the gun and hits Cora. Cora goes to hit T'Challa and misses, and he says, No, no, you have to do it this way, but faster. Like he's teaching him, like coaching him, like this is what you should do to kick my ass. Right. <laughs> oh, God. He uses it as so then, a, a like a training moment. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh. <laughs> Like, what is, the, like, this is supposed to be hard or something? Yeah, right. so Korath then hits T'Challa and immediately apologizes. And he's like, no, it's okay. Like, what the hell? He's like, no, it's okay. That's what we're here to do. Let's go. Yeah, right. This is how it's supposed to go. <laughs> I'm good. Keep going. So then T'Challa grabs Korath and pulls him towards the force field where the orb was. <laughs> and Korath hits the force field and gets shocked and then says, It's like a bug zapper. It's like, no, yeah. 
Remember the fun zappers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Classic Star Lord. So then T'Challa says that he now feels bad, and the two Sicarians begin to fire at T'Challa, who then ducks and throws the magnetic device at them, mm-hmm. which sends out like a shockwave, and the two Sicarians hit the ceiling and then fall. Yeah. And then um, T'Challa begins to walk out of the temple when he stops and look at Korath and says, well, I've hired worse. Yeah. <laughs> he had pity like, on his soul. Pretty much like, oh, yeah. that was fun. Time to go. Like, all right. Like, like I'll hire cool. this dude. He's, you know, he wants to keep Might him around well. because he's a fanboy. Right. So then we next see T'Challa leaving the temple with Korath swung mm-hmm. over his shoulder. Right. Um, and as he walks out the door, there are about 20 Sicarians waiting, pointing their guns at T'Challa. And the Sicarian tells them he's surrounded and outnumbered. Uh, and T'Challa says, so that appears, but a Ravager never flies solo. And then he like looks around, <laughs> Cricket. but nothing happens. Cricket. And then he says Cricket. it again and looks around. Hello. <laughs> the Sicarian's like, well, is that a, is that a catchphrase? Woo-hoo! <laughs> Woo-hoo! And then um, suddenly you hear a whistle and uh, it's Yandu's arrow heading towards the Sicarians. And you continue to hear the whistle and you see the arrow striking and killing each of the Sicarians. Um, and then you see Yandu as the arrow goes back into his holster. And so then T'Challa tells Yandu, well, you had me worried for a second. <laughs> and Yandu asks who the sleeping beauty is. Right. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, it's an it's a new recruit. And that, you know, he was after the orb as well. And then he just tosses it to Yandu. Yeah. Um, and Yandu says, you know, the thermals are off the charts and that if they wanted to have a little fun, like in the old days, ah. they would sell it to the highest bidder. And T'Challa says, well, if it were like the old days, you wouldn't have half your teeth. Would you see how beautiful inside. his teeth were? Yes, it was like looking at a different person. Yeah, the, the dental um, plan they yeah, have out there in you nowhere. Wouldn't have half your teeth. <laughs> Besides, you wouldn't want to jumpstart um, a colonial's dry dying star and save their system from extinction. But the real treasure is knowing what good can come of it. And then they uh, hop on the hop on the Ravager ship and then head into the sky. So I got a tidbit about the ship. Okay. So here's another difference between Guardians of the Galaxy and What If. So instead of Peter Quill's ship, the Milano, which was named oh, after I that, ah, that I am like, I gotta throw this. Where in do you there. think? Where do you think I got my name? I know. I <laughs> for brother who, one and brother two. Yeah, brother one and brother two named you, and they loved Alyssa <laughs> Milano, so they named you after, Al- first of all, to let your parents, to let them name you, fuck that shit. There is no way, right? if I let my kids, look at princess, princess, if I, God, not God forbid, yeah, God forbid, because there is no more babies in this house. If I had <laughs> another baby, and I let princess name the baby, she'd probably name it something like Joanna or Joanna or Thor or or she would I am not joking she names things all the time she names strangers she'll we'll walk down the street and she'll be like hi Carl we don't know it's this this little man (laughs) okay I think dad wanted to name me like Terry or something what oh boy your brothers did you a favor oh no like, no offense to anybody who's named Terry, but yeah. Yeah, you're not a Terry. I was like, what? You so are where not did a that Terry. that come from? Jamie. No, he actually wanted, like, Karma Lee. Oh, see, now that's beautiful. Aww. But my mom didn't want two Carmies. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm not going to call Carmie and then be, like, trying to. Which one? Number right, one, be two? like, big one, little one. <laughs> big Carmie, little Carmie. <laughs> Well, as you know, we have two names, names yes. in our family, and we just do big and little. That's how yeah. we do. Yeah. That's probably Ladies, what I would have been. But. It's happening again. I may get kicked off yet again. I hear it again. 
Anyway, all right, it stopped. So, um, Jamie, were you always going to be named Jamie, regardless, yeah. boy or girl? Yep. Uh, if I was a boy, I think I was going to be James, James after your dad. Yep. Oh yeah, that's cool. No, I was go- always going to be, I think Nicole. My mom told me that I was going to be a Scott if I was a boy. So, about it. My my brother was always going to be his name. Uh, and then would just be the female version of his name if he was a girl. Right. Which, thank God he was a boy because I can't imagine. (laughs) Oh, God. All right. So (laughs) anyway, I wanted to point out that Peter Quill's ship, the Milano, right? That's that was the name of his ship in Guardians of the Galaxy. But T'Challa's ship is named the Mandela. Isn't that sweet? Oh, after Aww. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. And which which kind of links to the first episode. Or no, the last episode of Loki when they were going through and Mandela did a voiceover. Yes. Um, so the next thing we see is a young T'Challa and his father talking and looking out the window. And T'Challa says, you know that there is so much adventure out there. And his father says he has the heart of a king, but this is just an adventure out there. And young T'Challa, you know, you could tell he's like longing for it. So then you see him outside throwing a dagger into the air and running after it as soon as it hits the ground. And he continues to throw it almost like a kid, you know, that you would see in like, you know, America, like playing baseball, just throwing the ball Mm -hmm. and catching it kind of thing. Yeah. And um, so he continues to throw it until he throws it past the force field that is surrounding Wakanda. And young T'Challa walks through the force field to get the dagger when a Ravager ship appears and like shines a spotlight on him. (laughs) And the ship was sent to Earth to pick up a spawn of a celestial ego. (laughs) And... Yandu had outsourced the pickup of this celestial being to fellow Ravagers. Yes, um, this Raglan and Taserface. Taser, Taser face. Taser face. <laughs> this is the Nexus event, right? Yep. Do we yep. agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Because before it was Yandu who picked up Peter. He just right. did the job himself. Yep. So they bring young T'Challa to Yandu and Yandu says, you morons, you grabbed the wrong kid. They're like, he's like, got they eye show, holes. They show he's a got picture. Ear holes. He's got a yeah. They show a picture and he's like, <laughs> well, all humans look the same to me. Yeah. Two, you know what he he's says, like, two he's sea like, holes, two ear holes, one eat hole. What eat eat hole? Checks out. Eat hole. <laughs> I love it. All humans look alike to me. Oh, he's like what? Exactly. Like, he's like a South Side Karen. I don't see race. I don't see color. <laughs> Get off my lawn! <laughs> you break. You don't see color. You that whatever. <laughs> exactly. Ass face. <laughs> so Yandu grabs T'Challa and was like, "Does this really look like Peter Quill to you?" And you know, while he's literally showing a picture of him, and Taserface says, "Sure, I don't know. All human beings look the same." Yep. Okay. <laughs> so then, um, Craglin says that the cosmic readings where he was taken nearly broke their dial, and T'Challa says, "Well, his home is built on vibranium." Right. So then, Yandu asks him what he was doing out there all by himself and T'Challa says you know he was exploring the world and Yanu's like well sounds fun but why stop at one world when you know they can show you all of them and then like the ship takes off and they move forward Mm. 20 years to present time yeah oh boy so then um we next see the Ravager ship land and adult T'Challa and the crew arrive at a bar. 
I know, I kind of love it. (laughs) And they toast to the Ravagers, and Cora says... Time out. Can I just say that this whole scene fucking blew my gourd off my shoulders? This, I'm like... Literally, I had a pause so many fucking times. (laughs) Maybe that's why I didn't like this episode. Like, so much was happening. There's so much. Go ahead. Yes, there's there's so much in this scene. And then when you just when you think that you can't handle like so much information coming at you at one time, then we finish. I mean, you get a little more. Oh, my God. Yeah. This whole episode's like that. Like they shove all of this in your yeah, face. They shoved, shoved a lot. Yes, they did. Um, I hope I caught it all. So we'll see. <laughs> right. We got you back. So. If you didn't. Oh, good. So Cora says, you know, if you could pick a favorite, and T'Challa says, really, I could not say. (laughs) And so Cora's like, well, you must have one. And, you know, says, what about the central bank heist of Dawn? (laughs) And Yandu says, never hurts to hurt a scroll. Right? Uh... Poor scrolls. (laughs) Poor scrolls. Right. They're even hated in this timeline. Oh, no, they never get away from it. Man. Nope. Man. So then Korath says, how exactly did he stop Thanos, the Mad Titan, from decimating half the universe? This is where my head exploded. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> yeah. So Thanos grabs Korath and says, I'm a big enough man to admit that I am wrong. Oh! And then T'Challa showed me there was more than one way to allocate the world's resources. Okay, okay. Still without merits. <laughs> yeah. And then Craglin goes, I'm pretty sure it was genocide. <laughs> sure. so, first reaction to this. They wrote good Thor the way we all wished male boomers would fucking act (laughs) where they admit their mistakes and they're willing to grow instead (laughs) instead of the thor that we got which was no thanos what i say thanos Thanos. yes yeah i didn't mean to say thor god no uh i'm sorry little princess it's not always thor it's not always thor princess (laughs) okay but instead you know the 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 Thanos that we got was your typical male boomer. Not all. Yeah, you're an asshole. You're an asshole. Your way or the highway. You know better. All you care about is yourself. Yeah. You're a terrible parent. You do not. <laughs> you, 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 well, not all boomers are terrible parents. I mean, our parents, I think, were all pretty good parents. The, our our six so. parents were pretty good but for the <laughs> most part like they he he tortures his children our parents do torture us i will t- i will give them that yes <laughs> they do torture us in their own way but like seriously he is the epitome the new happy thanos i think is what would happen if boomers went to fucking therapy <laughs> that's what would happen this world would be if boomers went to fucking therapy they would be happy thanos it would be good thanos go ahead that's funny. The working theory <laughs> <laughs> what do you need to go to the therapy for Ooh, you're yeah. fine it's We're all fine. in your head yeah it's all in your yeah. head just if we don't talk about it it never just happens get over it <laughs> right exactly. just get, get over, over it. it you'll be mm-hmm. fine yeah suck it up buttercup <laughs> Right. We could we could we could create a whole nother series on Fuck. that one. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead. go ahead. Okay. So then we see T'Challa at the bar paying for a drink and then slides the bartender his card and the bartender, who ends up turning out to be Drax, tells him that his money is no good. And he's like, Oh, okay. And he's like, No, 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 we only take cash. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is not good. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's just so matter so, of fact, just even in this timeline, he's still a matter of yes. fact. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, I have cash. And Jack says, wait, you are the Star-Lord and you saved my home planet from a Korean invasion. 
and T'Challa's like, oh, all in a day's work. And Jack says, no, a few days, six, in fact. <laughs> and let's take a picture to send it to my wife and daughter. <laughs> so they then take a picture and Drax says they should take another one because he looks terrible. <laughs> but I look great. <laughs> but you don't look so great. <laughs> like, cla- like, this is why I love Drax. Because he's like a four-year-old child. Yeah, no filter. The things you shouldn't say, but he says them. Right. Yeah. So T'Challa was like, no, it's okay. And Drax says, no, I insist. You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, we hear a voice that says, you know, he doesn't look bad from where I'm standing and appears a woman with blonde hair. And T'Challa says, Nebula. And she's like, hey, Cha-Cha. Which I was like, oh. Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha DiGiorgio. Best dancer. That's exactly what I thought of. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what I thought of. Did I ever tell you about the year I I went as Cha-Cha DiGiorgio for Halloween? I could fucking see it. Totally. Wait, here's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, what are you? <laughs> because, wait, my mom taped, here I am, 10 year old Nikki. Lip smacking. Like, I had red lips. My mom made my hair big and poofy with a look, with like a it. scarf in my hair. And I had, she taped my non existent <laughs> boobies to give me cleavage. And then she drew boobies. I love it. <laughs> I was 10. I love it. Like, I was 10. And I'm going, and they're like, oh, who are you? I'm like, I'm Cha Cha Di Gregorio. And they're like, okay, (laughs) all right, nice costume. And there was like maybe a handful of people that were like, hey, from St. Bernadette's, from Greece. And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. It was finally somebody is cool. I loved it because my grandma embroidered little roses on the bottom of my my black oh, dress that's fucking oh, wrong. and my it. mom let me wear heels they weren't like come fuck me pumps that she wears in greece but they were like little two inch heels Aww. i mean she had to make concessions yeah she couldn't give you the fuck you pumps but she gave you the boobies right she couldn't she- give you both it was one or the other I'm telling you I'm telling you well you I got the boobs her. not the pumps I got the boobs, not the pump. Well, because my mom, we were walking. My mom didn't want me to kill myself. She brought. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd rather have the boobs than the pumps. Yeah, she she brought my gym shoes. I ended up changing into my gym shoes like halfway through. Yeah, the night. I don't blame yeah. you. So then we see T'Challa and Nebula sitting at a table. And Nebula asks T'Challa if the big guy knows that he has the orb. And T'Challa says, who, your father? Ooh. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. he's lucky. I call him the big guy. T'Challa says that, <clears throat> excuse me, T'Challa says that she should talk to him as he has changed. And Nebula grabs T'Challa's claw necklace and asks if he will ever go back. Uh, and he says that there's nothing to go back to as Yandu uh, tried to return him long ago, but his home was destroyed by a senseless war. Uh, and Nebula says, so now you save others instead? And he's like, yeah, something like that. And she's like, well, do I have a job for you? Can we talk about Nebula for a moment? Yes. How gorgeous is she? Mm-hmm. The nice Thanos hasn't tortured her. So she yes, only. I have that too. Because the only yeah, thing that's wrong thing with her is her, her eye. Her eye, and that's it. Yeah. Right. So, so and if you remember, um she had explained that uh Thanos would replace a part of her organic body every time she lost a training fight with Gamora. Right. So obviously like T'Challa intervened with Thanos because all she has is the cyber eye and um the flowing blonde hair um makes her look closer to what her appearance was in the comics. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm liking this version of Star Lord. Yes, much better than the original. I have an observation at the end. Me too. Okay. It's part of my ch 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 changes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only have one ch 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 change because okay. it's really hard to. Because you cover them. That's why, you know? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. That's why. 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, so then we see Nebula showing the Ravager crew in Thanos the embers of Genesis, which is nutrient-rich cosmic dust from an ancient supernova with the power to terraform entire ecosystems. Um, with one ounce, you can heal a dying planet in minutes, and the payload, I'm telling you, can feed billions of people. Mm. And Korath says, well, don't tell Captain Genocide over here. Or you will spoil this <laughs> <laughs> And Nebula's like, well, this new guy is pretty funny. He is. You know, it's <laughs> nice to see him have a sense of humor in this world, right? in this timeline. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. He's such a stick in the mud normally, you know? Right. From um, the show. So then I says, well, I thought you worked alone, daughter. And Paul's uh-huh. like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. She's your offspring. <laughs> and then both Thanos and Nebula say at the same time, adopted. Adopted. <laughs> like, like Thor and always saying that Loki's adopted. That's right. your brother? Adopted, adopted brother. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, let, let's get this straight. <laughs> Um, so T'Challa says it's a long story and have been trying to get them both into counseling. Um, Yandu asks <laughs> who the mark is, and Nebula says it is Tanelir Tibian, the collector. Oh. <laughs> okay. So then, oh, go ahead. I have, time? okay. Did you guys know? I found this out today while I'm writing my notes and going through my tiki talks and doing my tidbits today, I found out that the Grandmaster and Tivian are brothers. Did you know this? No. No. I did not either. I get up and I run into the other room. I'm like, Mr. Big, did you know? That Grandmaster and the Collector are brothers. He's like, yeah. I'm like, where? <laughs> like, looking where at me. Go wrong? Wait, wait. I will explain to you. We didn't go wrong. Oh, no. Oh, okay, good. We did not go wrong. No. We're looking at the wrong websites, apparently. Because Mr. Big tells me, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're brothers. They haven't said it as it's they haven't known. made it canon. Well, they haven't made a canon in any MCU movie. It's oh, okay. just widely known. I'm like, is it in the comic books? And right. is that how we don't know? Is that right. how we, is that, is it just in the comic books and not in the MCU? And he couldn't answer that. He was not sure. And okay. I do not know because I, that's when um, the princess came in and completely, you know, wreaked havoc and. We had an issue on our hands anyway, but, and then I just didn't get back to it, but yeah, I found out that the grand, that grand, the grandmaster, I found out that the grandmaster and the collector are brothers. They look nothing alike, right? Exactly. Both sexy as hell. Neither. In their own way. In their own way. Yes. I would say Benicio del Toro is sex. The sexiest he is is in the usual suspects of football for real. And <laughs> nothing is sexier than a Jurassic Park Jeff Goldblum. Just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lay in there oh, with this shirt. Yeah, I with that. that or the fly when he's eating the candy bar. But that's kind of gross. <laughs> he's peeling the skin in the fly. <laughs> But yes, I was, I was, um, amazed to find that out. And, you know, I don't know where the fuck I've been, but, um, same place, same place we've been. <laughs> exactly. So don't feel bad. Really <laughs> because we, as everybody knows, we we're not only, experts. right. We are not experts oh, and no. we've only gotten into Marvel and MCU from the movies. We right. are not, we're we just not now. start off like the comics. Right. We exactly. are now getting into the comics, which uh, I just read the complete Captain Marvel series I'll, uh, for another time. But yes, amazing. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. That's my tagline. Finally, I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. I need a shirt that says "Go ahead." Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. See, there you go. See, you have. I love it. Uh, Alyssa has something. Everything. Everything means everything something. Means something. I have. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Mine's stupid. Mine is stupid. <laughs> no, it's not. Jeez. I love it. <laughs> no, be, no, mine will be. He, he, go ahead. Also, yours is. I took the scenic route. That's it. Yeah, I took the scenic. Yeah, well, because I always do. Oh God! All right, go ahead. You like that one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead. So, um. Craglin says, you mean the most ruthless kingpin in the galactic underworld? What? And Clara asked Thanos if that was him. And Thanos says, it was. <gasps> but when I went straight, Tandler Tevan Tevan saw an opening and filled the power vacuum. <gasps> oh, man. So then T'Challa so was like, well, I'm sure we can all agree the collector is dangerous. I have a question. So now is the collector going to take Thanos's role in this timeline? It does appear to be so. So is going to say yeah, it seems like that. So do you think the collector will appear in other episodes? I mean, do you think that he might? Well, it depends on on the direction of how these episodes go. They're all going to like end up together at the end. I because I mean just going along with it like they gotta lead to something yeah i would assume they're not all you know, like if they're following well there's already right. gonna be a season two did you see that right yeah yeah, yeah. all right yeah it'll be interesting mm -hmm. but yeah i could definitely see it going that way okay all right or at least that being a really good option to go that way all right mm -hmm. um so Craigland says, yeah, FYI, but the collector does not offer dental. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love it. So Yandu stands up and says this is suicide and that not even him could get through his defenses. And he tells T'Challa that the collector won't do him the favor of killing him. He will dissect him like a science project, frame whatever is left, and hang him up on a wall. Yeah. Oh. So that Nebula is like, well, should I mark them down as undecided? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Like maybe. The, the thing that I really liked about this episode was the humor. Yeah. Yes. That was probably like one of the only things I really liked about this episode. <laughs> but I feel like that's how like Guardians of the Galaxy is yes. anyway. Yes. That, like, oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. So Yandu says, as long as the collector is involved, the ravagers are not. So T'Challa walks up to Yandu and says, they do not back down to a fight. And Yandu says, they steal from the rich and give to the poor, just like that earthling folk hero of yours, Robin Leach. <laughs> <laughs> and T'Challa is like, you mean Robin Hood? Lifestyles of the rich and famous with Robin Lee. Saturday nights. Yeah. And <laughs> so then what we see next is Nebula going over all the details of the collector's face, which is located in a severed head of an ancient celestial being. So right here is where it all hit me. They are recreating Ocean's Eleven. Like it seemed like yes. Ocean's Eleven, did it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And uh, Nebula is Danny Ocean. <laughs> yeah. Or is that his name? Was that his name, Danny Ocean? Yeah. 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 So the Black Order is the security of the collector. Karina, the collector's assistant, escorts Yandu, Nebula, and the cargo, cargo yes. box, which is kind of like the, you know, the, I think what was it? The, like Ocean's um, Eleven. But yeah, like Ocean's <laughs> Eleven, but I immediately thought of, you know, the, the Trojan horse. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, so anyway, because in the cargo box, T'Challa is hidden in it, 
And so they go into the building where they come to the security desk, which on set Proxima Midnight is sitting at for a check. Oh. Um, so meanwhile, Thanos and Korath pretend. See, he looks just as scary as a cartoon character as he does as a movie character. Like, yeah. Yes. Because little man gets uncomfortable when he's on, when he's. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Well, well, little, there's not much that doesn't scare a little man. I'm just saying he'll grow out of it. He's seven. Uh, but yeah, there's no, it's like he's young. You know, he's yeah. young. Unlike the princess who goes head first into danger, she has no fear. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Thanos and Korath pretend to fight outside to cause a distraction. And Korath tells Thanos that he thought they were faking. And Thanos says, well, we're <laughs> well, trying, calling me Captain Genocide again. <laughs> So he does. And Korath calls Thanos yeah. Captain Genocide again, and Thanos throws him right against um, Corvus. Oh, I don't you know have these names. Name. I did not have these names. Uh-uh. I have. Well, I I had help with these names. Okay. Glave, Glave. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Thanos throws him right um, at Corvus Glave and Black Dwarf of the Black Order. Okay. And Corvus issues all personnel to come outside and attend to the fighting. Yeah. So then inside, Yandu and Nebula continue on and they leave. Um, and T'Challa leaves the cargo and goes in search of the embers of Genesis. And then we see Yandu and Nebula getting introduced to the collector. Oh. <laughs> so then it, it cuts to T'Challa continuing to search for the embers. And he walks past Cosmo the space dog. Yeah. And then stumbles upon Howard the duck. Okay, and before, asks, wait, time out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to stop there. <laughs> okay. Two things. One, Cosmo the space dog. Let's dive, let's dive a little deeper. Not too deep. Just, the, you know, dip our toe into this one. Go for it. All right. So Cosmo the space dog was launched into space by the, by the Soviet space program and got very lost and gained mental powers in the comic books. He ended up- Really? Yes, yes. He ended up on Nowhere, the planet Nowhere, where he became the chief of security and Cosmos, <laughs> yes. And Cosmos the space dog was uh, ended up being a longtime ally of the Guardians. I love that. Yes, yes. and he also super cool. Yeah, but um, yeah, he also um, walked past like a dark elf, which was in Thor Dark World, and there is there's a lot of things which I'll get into later. I got like yeah. a list. Um, good because at this point in time, I started to have overload. <laughs> Do you want me to go into Howard the Duck? You can. <laughs> I love me some Howard the Duck. So I did not realize that Howard the Duck was a Marvel comic character because I grew up with that 1986 cult classic, Howard the Duck. (laughs) The movie where Leah Thompson gets it on with the duck. She (laughs) sucks off duck weenie. So like, I I loved this movie as a child and I never knew until um, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He made the cameo in, in the first Guardians. So Howard the Duck first appeared in Adventures into Fear number 19 on December, in December of 73. Oh, that was a great year. Not my year. I'm a little bit younger than that. That's uh, Mr. Big Territory right there. So um, <laughs> getting close to it. Uh, but this current MCU Howard the Duck is voiced by Seth Green and has made cameos in Guardians of the Galaxy, volumes one and two. Um, There was an animated series that he was 
a, a Guardians of the Galaxy animated series that he made um, a cameo in as well, and was also voiced by Seth Green. Uh, he also appeared uh, for literally a millisecond in the final war scene of Avengers Endgame. Okay, so um, he asks T'Challa, asks Howard to how to get to the Embers, and Howard just rambles off some directions. So he breaks Howard the duck out as he continues to ramble. And T'Challa says to Howard to give him the tour of the place to find the embers. Meanwhile, outside the chorus, Black Dwarf and Proxima control the situation and notice that this is a diversion because it's all the Ravagers. Um, the Proxima sounds the alarm and the building begins to lock down. Mm. Um, we see T'Challa leaving Howard the Duck at the bar that they stopped at and escapes into another room before the door closes behind him. T'Challa notices his claw necklace begins to light up and brings him next to a Wakandan ship. <gasps> oh man. He goes aboard where he activates a message from his father saying about the abduction of his child and that if anyone knows his whereabouts to tell his father and it is there in that moment that T'Challa realizes that Wakanda is not destroyed yeah um and then Nebula enters and tells him that it was him that the collector wanted and Nebula was to deliver him over bitch (laughs) right I was like typical Mm mm-hmm well, so then, oh well, yeah. yeah, but I was not surprised. <laughs> so then the next thing you see is all the Ravagers being locked up in the facility. And Yandu asks if T'Challa is okay. And he grabs Yandu and tells him that he has lied to him all this time. And Taserface asks if this is the mission of family stuff. He says, <laughs> well, well, it's family stuff then. <laughs> And Yanu tells T'Challa, but the that, way he said it, he's like looking, like, like you know, trying not to look directly in their eyes and like, right. like that awkward look away awkwardly kind of thing. Yeah, it's like don't look, but look. Right, right. <laughs> um. So Yanu tells T'Challa that he is just like him, an explorer, and that he belongs up here with them, his family. And T'Challa says that they're not his family; they never were. Which oh got to hurt. That that's a that's a, a sock in the gut right there. Yep. That was just a um, low blow. Absolutely. Yeah. So the Black Order comes in and they take T'Challa and he wakes up in a glass case. Bum, bum, bum. The collector starts talking to him about a piece that he is missing and that he is the perfect piece for his collection. The collector tells um the ebony maw to dissect him and strip him for parts wait and time nebula. out time out yeah you missed the funniest part i don't know what did i miss when the collector when he looks at t'challa and the kid and he's like really disappointed that it's t'challa and he says can you not fly shoot lasers from your eyes oh, or yeah. something he's like <laughs> do something you know yes like, you're just a boring human. Like, what the fuck? Why am I collecting you? Right, which is the point that he leads him to say, oh, yeah. you know, dissect him and strip him for parts. Right. So then Nebula enters the holding cell with the rest of the Ravagers, and she pulls a gun on Korath and turns and shoots slash kills Corvus. Mm-hmm. Um, Nebula then tells the rest of the Ravagers about the real plan she and T'Challa came up with. And that this was all part of a distraction so that Nebula can get the embers. You mean a diversion? <laughs> yeah. A diversion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, T'challa, T'Challa takes his claw necklace and breaks the glass that he is in and starts to escape. Um, Ebony Ma then takes the broken glass and puts it on T'Challa like handcuffs. Oh. And then uh, we see Karina shoots the Ebony Maw and T'Challa escapes through the collector's lair. Oh boy. And while he's running, he gets hit by the collector. And then the collector summons a box 
from this like mechanism on his wrist. Oh boy. And the box opens up and there is a bunch of weapons present, including Captain America's shield. Mm -hmm. Um, The collector then grabs a dagger, which he said was from one of the dark elves and tries to hit T'Challa and T'Challa blocks it. Okay, wait, can we go, can we go through, before you go any further, can we go through his arsenal? Yes. Okay. First, let's talk about the arm, okay? Could it possibly be Korg's arm? That's what I read. It mentions getting a fist off of a terribly chatty Cronin, and Korg from Thor Ragnarok is terribly chatty Cronin oh yeah (laughs) so maybe in this reality poor he killed Korg that's not good because I love him I don't know I I I I don't know it's a theory that's out there and then he like you said Captain America shield and he has Milner Uh, but here's the thing and one of Loki's daggers possibly yes wait here's the thing with with Milnir. Milnir Moynir. I can never Molnir. Molnir. I can Molnir. never fucking yeah. say it. I can't say it. Anyway, here's the Thor's thing. hammer. Thor's hammer. <laughs> who was worthy was enough? Just... Who was worthy enough to put it in that case? Right? Uh, uh-huh. uh or maybe in this timeline. You don't have to be worthy? Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Well, there is party Thor coming, so we'll see, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get us all the the suckers, the baby sucker. Yes. Yeah. Did you guys ever go to a rave? No. Once. I went to one once. I'll never do it again. I was scared out of my fucking gourd. I couldn't believe these kids were just doing lines of coke on each other's backs. I was like, what the fuck? I'm out. I couldn't <laughs> handle it. Hey, I'm a wild child. Ain't that wild. All right. I'm more of a yeah, let's no, get drunk in the that. alley kind of wild. That's how wild yeah. I get getting drunk in the alley or no getting yeah. drunk at the um, we're South Siders. We got drunk at the cemetery. The park. Giving me oh, the cemetery. Yeah. Well, we went to the cemetery, <laughs> Mount Olivet, you know, anyway. So he had Milner and then um, also half of Thanos's helicopter blade sword was in there. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. then um you said the dark elf knife. Uh yep. Ronin's hammer. Did you see that? No. Yes, Ronin's nope. hammer was in there. And then you're gonna get to the last one I had. Yeah. And then when you get um, to that, you gotta stop because I got a tidbit about that. Okay. Well, I'm okay. gonna say it right now. <laughs> so um T'Challa blocks the dagger. And so then the collector grabs Helena's headpiece, which gives him the power Hella. to throw her deck. Oh, sorry. Did your okay. auto correct? Did your auto uh-huh. correct? Yeah, yeah. It happens to me all the time. I had to switch. Dude, it. T'Challa kept going to T'Chaka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking left it. Uh huh. Because yeah. I knew that one. I added. I added T'Challa to my words list because i know we're going to be using it a lot yeah i was fine with (laughs) tachaka because i was like i know this um so then he grabs hella's headpiece which gives him the power to throw her daggers yes okay pause for you (laughs) my okay so my my fun facts are about the necker swords her dagger in Mm -hmm. the comics these the the necro neck necro swords right the Necroswords is an extension of the god of the symbioids. I want to say that's how you pronounce okay. it, the symbioids. And this god is attached to Gore, the god killer, who will be played by Christian Bale in Love and Thunder. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. The more you know. That's the fun yeah. fact I had. And then that the concludes fact. all of my tidbits and fun facts. Because uh, I had to order pizza right then. And I didn't finish. 
and that's okay. <laughs> I'm actually almost done. All right. Um, so then he hits T'Challa and pins him on a glass case. And we see the rest of the Ravagers running for the ship before the rest of the Black Order and the Sakarans arrive while shooting at them. Um, Thanos says, you know, go ahead, I'm going to stay back to fight. And he ends up fighting Black Dwarf and Proxima. And then um, we see that Nebula goes back to help Thanos. Uh, While that's happening, the Collector tells T'Challa that his old family left him and his new one did too. Aww. And T'Challa says that a, never, a Ravager never flies alone, and oh. out comes Yandu's arrow and knocks the headpiece off the Collector's head. Oh. He then tries to hit him with the arrow, but the Collector grabs and breaks it. Um, and then it cuts, and we see Nebula saving Thanos as he is getting beat up by Black Dwarf uh, and Proxima. And then Nebula uses the embers on the Black Dwarf, and he turns into a giant plant. <laughs> and so, then um oh go ahead she ruined it she sacrificed saving a planet and having all of this vegetation i would have let thanos die <laughs> yeah but they were working on their relationship you know <laughs> remember they were gonna go to, go to therapy, therapy. They were going to therapy. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So instead of therapy, she turned the guy who was trying to into a plant. Into a plant. Yeah. <laughs> into an aloe well, vera plant. comes out in the wash. Yeah. <laughs> Bamboo. Bamboo. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Something that grows really fast. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Um, so then Thanos and Nebula run to the ship and they get on and Kraglin flies away. So Yandu and T'Challa fight with the collector, and Yandu asks, "What now?" And T'Challa says, "Sticky fingers." Oh. <laughs> and at first, I was like, "Sticky fingers." What the fuck? <laughs> so then uh, the collector grabs Yandu, but meanwhile Yandu grabs the mechanism from his wrist and uses it to open a glass case, and he throws the collector inside. Yep. Good motherfucker, oh. you deserve it, dick nut. God. Right. I'm sorry, go And ahead. so then um, Karina walks up and uses it to open all the cases so that all the people and things that the collector has locked up are all free. Which was and a lot all... more than in the movies. Shit. Like, there is yeah. a lot more he has collected. Yes. And they all attack the collector. And then Yandu and T'Challa escape into the Wakanda ship. Yeah. And then Yandu and T'Challa take Cosmo the space dog with them. <laughs> Good. And I was like, yes. Good. Don't leave him behind. So maybe he has a future in the MCU. Yeah, maybe he has a purpose, which I would love. Yeah. Because I love puppies. Yes. Well, puppies are beautiful and they give you love, unconditional love. Yes. We all love puppies. Um, yeah, so then really. Yandu goes to apologize, but T'Challa says no. You know, I asked to see the world. And Yandu says that there is no place in this galaxy where he doesn't belong. And so then T'Challa ends up back in Wakanda where he reunites with his family. And his father is so happy to see him. And then T'Challa introduces him to his other family. So we <gasps> see all the Ravagers. That's right. His dad's not. Wait, time out. His dad's not dead because. Again, no. all roads go back to Bucky. He's not the Winter yes. Soldier. Right. So he is still alive. So he did get to see his dad. Oh, that's um, wonderful. So then, you know, the Ravager family and the Wakanda family, they start to mingle. And T'Challa's father wants to know how he was aboard the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> Which was like, awkward. <laughs> So then T'Challa just says that Yandu found him because he was lost. Yeah. Which is not a lie. No, not a lie, but not the truth either. Right. It was like an omission. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So then the next scene, um, the watcher says from one family to another, and it opens to a man mopping up a restaurant floor. (laughs) The man takes off his headphones and turns to find another person entering the restaurant. The man mopping the floor tells the other man that they are closed, and 
the man who entered says, what, Peter, can't spare any time for dear old dad? Oh! Which, that's when we see that I... that's Peter Quill and the guy who entered the restaurant is his father, Ego. <gasps> oh, man. Yeah, oh, so then the man. screen goes black and comes back with the words um, dedicated to our friend, our inspiration, oh. and our hero, Chadwick Boseman. Boseman. That, that, um, that made me cry. As, yeah, as this was the last Marvel movie show that he did before passing away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does, he is featured in three episodes, but none are as big of a spot as this particular right. episode. Yeah. Oh, it was just beautiful. 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 Good job. Good job. That was it. So Good I had job. a tidbit about the end okay or there's another um there's two of them so when um t'challa is fighting against the collector um star lord him as star lord begins pouncing from the cell using his hands and feet and it's just like a panther so it's kind of shows like his true mc destiny as wakanda's black panther who yes. adopts a very similar fighting style. So you could take the boy out of Wakanda, but not the Wakanda out of the boy. You got it. And then um, at the end, when Ego is with Peter on Earth, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Peter's at a Dairy Queen and in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2, uh, yeah. Ego, when Ego is living with his mother, they visit a Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah, he planted the seed. Oh, I totally the, missed that. Yeah, he planted yeah. the seed in behind it there. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I have, you know what? I missed a tidbit when, um, really quickly, that um, when T'Challa entered the hangar and he saw all these ships that the collector has collected, a ton, a ton of ships. I, they are as follows. Peter Quill's ship, the Milano, mm-hmm. Alyssa Milano, was in there. Uh, a scrapper ship from Ragnarok was in there. The uh, experimental Quinjet uh, in Captain Marvel was in there. Uh, there was, yes, an X-Wing from Star Wars was in there. A little nod to the greatest sci-fi series ever created. <laughs> One of the Nova Corps uh, Star Blasters was in there. Uh, the Grandmaster's party bus. It's birthday! That, uh, the party bus yes. was in there. The ship that Ronan flew in Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't remember the name of it, but that was in there. Grandmaster's actual ship, the Statesman, was in there. And then um, I found uh, the quantum ship from Ant-Man and the Wasp. There are other ones that I could not identify, but those are the ones that a lot. either Mr. Let's face it. Those are the ones that Mr. Big found. I'm not going to take credit for that. <laughs> I uh, Quantum Ship and the X-Wing were the only two fucking things that I knew. Oh, and the party bus. It's because okay. because it's my birthday. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> that was it. But Mr. <laughs> Big, that's Mr. Big right there. So, all right. Questions for clarity, ladies. Do you have anything? We have no yeah. answers from the last episode because, you know. We're not going to. We're yeah. probably no. not going to, no. But I have a, I have two questions. With T'Challa becoming Star-Lord, my question is, will Peter Quill take a dark turn in the series and so, help his father Ego on some kind of mission? I wonder because it seems like this reality actually was kind of better as him being Star Lord, then Star Lord, OG wait, wait, Star Lord being Star Lord. Wait, like a lot of wait, good happened. Wait, yes. <laughs> let's like, since you're talking terrible. about since you're talking about it, let's let's jump on over to ch 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 change it, turn and face the stranger. Yeah. That was what I was going to talk about during changes. Exactly what you said. 
that T'Challa is a better Star Lord than fucking Peter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. Bag. You're right. You're absolutely right. Star Lord, mm-hmm. I mean, look at he's like the one everybody loves him. He does good. Well, mm-hmm. because he is still embracing the the royalty and the the values of Black Panther, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, he was raised with them. Where Quill was just some schlup from Missouri. You know? Right. But like Nebula wouldn't be a cyborg. Uh, right. Thanos actually changed his ways. Right. Like, so many. Or I mean, like maybe would we feel a little different if everyone was who they typically were in Guardians? Mm-hmm. Like maybe this new Star Lord would have faced a lot more challenges to where maybe he wouldn't have been so successful. If everybody stayed, no, I think the point of what they're trying to point out is that because Star Lord was T'Challa and he's such a peaceful person and he is such a righteous, not righteous, that's the wrong word. Like he's just such a good human being. It rubs off on the people around him. Yeah. That's what it is. Just and by, even- but just by okay. Yandu being a lazy fuck and not doing his job and sending laser face right. and the soup soup taser guy. Face. Taser taser, face. I'm sorry, taser face and Mr. Soup Soup. What's his name? He sings the soup soup song. Um, what was his character's soup, name? Soup. Soup. Soup soup. soup. In uh, Guardians of Galaxy Volume 2, he's sitting there eating soup and he's singing a song. And he, oh fuck. Anyway, the soup soup song. <laughs> yeah. Um, my kids call it the soup soup song. Anyway, I, like, what are we <laughs> I don't about? remember the name of the song. I'll have to ask Mr. Big. He'll let us know. But he's sleeping right now. Um, anyway, the Nexus event of um them uh, taking the wrong kid. Yandu, Yandu being a lazy fuck. Right. And sending his cronies to go get the kid, and they pick up the wrong kid. It was a happy mistake. Yeah. Right. You know, we saw what happened. I mean, seriously, they almost lost an endgame because of fucking Peter Quill. Right. That's what I'm saying, douchebag. So I have I have one more question for clarity. And that is in Wakanda, will Shuri or Eric or Killmonger take up the mm-hmm. mantle of Black Panther after King Ch- T'Challa passes away now? Well, he's back though. Oh, true. Yeah, that's a stupid question. Never mind. I'm deleting it. Delete. Okay. It's gone. That was no a more thing. questions. No more. That's it. Great job, Jame. Good job, Jamie. Beautiful. Excellent work. Excellent work. Thank Alyssa, you. what do you got for us? Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and Anchor. And we are also on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to shoot us an email, um, any alternate endings that you'd like to see, any theories, you know, just or just say hi, you can email us at America's Asses Galcast at gmail.com. And um, there's another thing we'd like you to do. If you could please like us, love us. Follow us, rate us, review us, and subscribe to us. And one more thing. I love you. Love you. I love you. 3,000! Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. What is that? Is that you farting? Is that your dog? What dog is she doing? Oh! Is she dreaming? She's dreaming. She's dreaming. She's running right now. I bet she's dreaming she's running through that's a field how, of like, daffodils. That's oh. how I know she's like 
Happy. in a deep sleep. <laughs> and she starts doing that and she starts like twitching. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. oh, God. So sweet. Yeah, sorry. No, that's <laughs> I just, okay. I was like, if you hear, like, it's so cute. Like, it's not whimpering. It, but no. It's adorable. It's so cute. It's like, oh, she's I, dreaming. I, I feel like I give it, like, she's, like, all bubbly and, like, poppy. Like, she, like, pops. She's, like. Because she's dreaming that she's running through a field. Yeah, she's happy. She's happy with the yeah, wind. I just thought that. Making her sick. ears flapping around. Her little uh-huh. tail going. Oh, Sorry. People, people I just throwing to be pieces like, of cheese at her. She's in yeah. heaven. <laughs> Did you guys see? I posted on our Facebook page. There might be a fourth yeah, Chris. Saw. Right. Chris Pine might become. Mm-hmm. He's the collector of Chris's. What was that? That was the. Right. You're... I finally got them all. <laughs> <laughs> My collection what's... is complete. So what's Chris Pine going to play? They don't know. They're just going to. So create... He's in talks with. Marvel or MCU well, and uh, if, Kevin Feige. Let me tell you, if he has a, a bra- if he has brains in his head, he would do it. Oh, for sure. You kidding me? It's he'd, better he'd than be fucking stupid. DC. The right. only he'd good be movie not to. The only good movie that DC ever made thus far is the first Wonder Woman movie. Why? Oh, agreed. It's the Never only saw. good DC movie. Oh, you need to see it. The first Wonder Woman movie is fantastic. Beautifully executed, beautifully shot, beautifully written, beautifully acted. Everything else before and after fucking sucks. Garbage. All of it. Even the CW shit. It all sucks. Yeah, I watched like the first season of Supergirl and I'm like, no. It all sucks. It all sucks. Then... Here comes uh, Gunn doing fucking Suicide Squad. And it's fantastic because they hired him when Disney fired him for those those tweets that he uh, made years and years ago. When they fired him for making 10-year-old tweets um, not that it's an excuse, not an excuse, but he did apologize and he has stated that his views have changed drastically in 10 years, which people grow. I get it. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it happens. So um, he um, was snatched up by DC. That's how come he was able to make that movie. And then Disney's like, fuck you and hired him back. Ah! Boy, did he get a, he got the, the best end of that deal. Right? Man. And um, sure. did you watch the new Suicide Spot? No. Neither have I. Mr. Big did and the kids. They loved it. I feel like I'm betraying them. Right? I, w- I, am, I have no interest. I have no desire. I, just- I gotta finish Outer Banks, all right? Fucking Outer Banks. I cannot get into it. God, Nikki. I cannot get into it. These kids are fucking annoying. (laughs) I want to slap them. I hate teenagers. I hate them. They scare me. Some of them scare me because they're little assholes. And She doesn't um, like JJ. I hate JJ. Oh, you'll come around. You will. I love JJ. Yes. Okay. I did not, not like a him fan. in the beginning. Okay. I did not like How him far are you, Jamie? How far are you? Um, I'm almost fucking finished. Oh She's my god. Time. There's two season seasons. Season two, episode yeah. eight. Okay. Yeah, episode eight of season two. She's on. all right. So yeah. this is my first of all, I am obligated to ask you a question. Have any of you? started to watch either Doctor Who? Yes? No? Mm-mm. No. Did either of you watch Blade Runner? Yes? No? No. <laughs> no. Did either of you start watching Lovecraft Country? No, I really need the list, though, because if it's not in front of me, when I go to search for shit to watch, I'm not going to remember. I was going to watch, Love. I was going to start Lovecraft Country the other day. 
Okay. But I was crafting and I put on Grace and Frankie because they had like four new episodes. So I, like I could listen to that and I don't have to watch it. All right. See, and the thing with Outer Banks is I didn't binge it. I watched F- or season one when season one came out. Yeah. Okay. So like when I when went it came out Netflix, last year. Yeah. So when I went on to Netflix, it was like new season, and I was like, oh sweet. Okay. So like I didn't binge it. Oh. Okay. I just started season two. Well, I have to binge it. I'd already seen season one. All right. All right. So all how right. far are you? The first episode. I've been pretty busy the last few days, lady. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm going to, I'll have more time. Cause I'll, what I'll do is either today or tomorrow I'll watch it. Cause uh, I'll just, cause I have to edit this weekend. So um, I'll either watch it. I'll probably watch it tomorrow. I'll probably be extremely exhausted. I'm, tomorrow's going to be my recoup day. And then I'll just edit all day, Saturday and Sunday, but I'll probably watch it tomorrow. So there's your list ladies. There's your list. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Doctor Who, HBO Max, specifically the Vincent Van Gogh series of it. That that specifically. And it has uh, Karen, uh, what's her, Kellis, Kelly, no, Karen. Gillen. Gillen uh, is, yeah. in, is in that. So here you nice. go. This has been America's Assist.